What's up with it? Everybody, Shane Moore B. And Nicole. Well, back it up with some more reaction videos. Geography now. Kenya, man. Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of want to visit Kenya someday. I'm I excited for this one. I uh, love Africa. Yeah, because you've been there. What part of Africa you been to? It was in Zambia. Zambia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to. He probably did Zambia. Probably. I yeah, man. But we're going to die right into it. So I'm really stoked about this. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ken. Yeah? Mm, yeah, dig this episode? You're going to be doing this the entire episode, aren't you? Yeah, you want to get paid, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, then act surprised every time that comes up in a script. Oh, that's so funny. Wow. Uh, uh, I uh, totally <laughs> see what you did there. <laughs> mm, good boy. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host, Barbs. We are back in Africa, and I'm sure you've heard of at least a little bit about Kenya, whether it's where your Starbucks mm -hmm. brew was imported from, or if you oh, see those I jumping Maasai people, or if you want to make another cliche Obama uh, joke. Kenya seems to take the spotlight in most of it in Africa. It's made a name for itself. Now let's it's see Obama, where it is. Obama dad was king in Kenya. The name Kenya is roughly derived from the words of various dialects, meaning God's resting place. And when you see what's going on, you'll understand why. First of all, Kenya is located in East Africa, transected in the south by the equator, surrounded by five countries, with a decent-sized coast along yeah, the Somalia, coast of right. Africa, mm -hmm. Lake Victoria, as well as the Indian Ocean to the east. The country is divided into 47 semi-autonomous counties, with the capital and largest city, Nairobi, which has its own county in itself. The largest cities after Nairobi would be Mombasa and Nakuru. However, the busiest airports would be the three international hubs, Nairobi Jomo Kenyatta, Mombasa's Moi International, and Eldoret International. As mentioned in the Ethiopia episode, they have a dispute over the Ilemi Triangle with Ethiopia and South Sudan, as well as yeah. the incredibly packed Migingo Island in Lake Victoria, where over yeah. 130 people live on only 2,000 square meters Jeez. of space. Mm. I mean, you're probably wondering, why do they all stay there? Couldn't they just spread out to the bigger adjacent Usingo Island with much more space? Shut up! That's why! Transport in Kenya <laughs> is pretty developed compared to the other African states. Railway service runs between the coastal Mombasa all the way to the border of Uganda. Roads connect to virtually all their neighbors, a ton going into Tanzania, Uganda. Uganda, and Somalia, what? whereas the two main ones that Uganda, enter South Uganda. Sudan and Ethiopia I'm, are the I'm A1 and A2. Uganda. Nairobi is cool because it's the only city in the world with a national park and game reserve. Some parts only seven kilometers from downtown giving this unorthodox view of wild animals juxtaposed to cityscapes in the background. Anyway, some areas of interest throughout Kenya might include places like the National Peace, Love, Unity, and Silver Jubilee Monuments, yeah. the Jomo Kenyatta Statue, the Giraffe Center and Giraffe Manor Hotel where you can literally have giraffes come up to you. Bomas of They're Kenya, cool. the ruins of Gedi, Narni, Takwa Milinga, Dani, Pate, and Shaka. See you in Lamu Fort, Uhuru Gardens Memorial Park, Hyrax Prehistoric Site and Museum, Nairobi Gallery, African Heritage House, the Carnivore Restaurant, the Nairobi Railway Museum, George Adamson's Grave, hmm. Itengela, hmm. Iten, Home of the Champions, and the Maasai Ostrich Farm where you can ride ostriches if you are not too heavy. However, that list no of man-made hmm. structures pales in comparison to the natural wonders Kenya is known hmm. for, which means we got a train Transition into the next part. Hey, Ken! What's up? You guess what comes up next? Dude, it's the same thing in every episode. I'm pretty sure they know what's gonna happen okay, next. Okay, okay. Ken, <laughs> I'm really getting sick of your sass. Okay, I cannot stand it. <laughs> okay, that was good. What was good? <laughs> Some countries thrive off of industry, some off of finance. Kenya's strongest feature, though, would downright have to be its natural landscape. Tourism. First of all, Kenya lies right on the East African Rift, which, as we explained in the Eritrea and Ethiopia episodes, is the series of cracks in East Africa that splits all the way down from the Red Sea to Mozambique, creating highlands in the west and flatter savannas and valleys in the east along the coast. This also creates a wonderful network of narrow, slivery lakes, like the largest one, Lake Turkana, in the northwest, along the border with Ethiopia. Lake Turkana is the world's largest desert lake, and due to its oh the world's largest mm. alkaline lake huh. as well. This means yeah. that Kenya is technically on a volcanic zone, although Whoa. most volcanoes that's are crazy. all but Holocene and extinct. The last major eruption was around 100 years ago on oh, Amarok in ago. the Central West Highlands. However, at over 5,100 meters, that volcanic activity did create the largest mountain in Kenya and the second in all of Africa, Mount Kenya, which is where Kenya got its name from. On Mount Mogono, okay. it looks kind of creepy because it has like three mini crater pimples yeah. on the yeah. side. Close by the base of Mount Kenya, you can find the longest river, the Tana, that flows down to the valleys and eventually empties into the Indian Ocean. Kenya has 54 national parks and game reserves, the largest one being the Savo in the southeast. However, the most popular one being the Maasai Mara along the border yeah. with Tanzania, technically part of the Serengeti. Here, mm -hmm. the Great Migration occurs, in which every July, the largest animal migration on Earth moves millions of nomadic species up to Kenya from Tanzania. It's such a hot spot that even National Geographic... Do people move them? Like or they doing themselves? They, covered it they like move themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Kenya phenomenon. is, no surprise, a wildlife haven. The big five animals are common around here, one of which being the national animal, the African lion, and they can be found at almost almost every national park. There are way too many species to list, but basically almost every animal in the Lion King can be found in Kenya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yes, wildebeest can be kind of like total douchebags. Who are wildebeest again? They're the ones that killed Mufasa. Like Not he jumped Mufasa. In. No. Uh, oh, no. Simba. Yeah. 
no. the dad. Oh yeah, no, that is. Mufasa. Mufasa is the bad guy. Uh, yeah, okay, Mufasa's Mufasa is the dad. Resource-wise, Kenya <laughs> is a country of balance. Today, the service sector and tourism contributes to mm -hmm. over 60% of their overall GDP, making it their largest foreign exchange earning sector. Agriculture has always been a principal driving force for Kenya as well. Today, they are the third largest tea producer in the world after China oh. and mm. India. Yeah, way to go, Kenya. Speaking of which, food in Kenya is similar to other African Great Lake nations. Most meals are served with the national staple ugali, which is mashed grain powder often mixed with cassava or plantains cooked mm -hmm. into a thick starchy pretty cool to paste you're supposed to eat it with it's stews called ubali where i was meat. otherwise sukuma wiki or greens usually accompany it's pretty good at every meal bueno and dalia are common and if you're lucky try some onyoso nyen and dede for snacks by the way have you ever noticed mm -hmm. that a ton of sub-saharan african tribes have like amazing teeth well it's mostly because a lot of them use chewing sticks which are twigs from various trees like licorice bush gum trees and the salvador persica also known as the toothbrush tree these oh. twigs have natural Natural teeth cleaning and whitening properties. You can even buy them yeah, on Amazon. Is. Overall, Kenya is seen as like the financial hub for both East and Central Africa as they have the highest GDP in the region, famous for their newly established digital industry, including the introduction of M Pesa, mobile banking systems used by millions of people across the world. Kenyans are also famous for their interesting investment groups known as Chama or table banking. It's a little hard to explain, but it's basically like a crude version of bank loans, but it's operated by a community of friends that you really trust. It's like, mm. all right, boys, put your money on the table. All right, cool. So this is all the money we got. You can grab as much as you want, but you got to explain what you're going to use it for and how you're going to invest and how you're going to pay off on interest next month. Ken, go. I'm going to take $5,000. There's these new shoes that I'm trying to vent, but get Shit. this. It's made out of coffee. Okay, Ken, you're out of the club. No, but seriously, <laughs> check out this video by Joy Wool Organization. I'll put a link in the description. They did a great job explaining. Kenyan people are definitely an entrepreneurial bunch of people that have made a name for themselves. Let's see how in... If East Africa was a family, Kenya would be like the brother who got rich but still has some weird issues in his head that he kind of has to suppress. <laughs> First of all, the country has about 49 million people and about three quarters of the population is below 30 years of age. Ah. The country is made up of about 47 different tribes. However, the majority of these tribes are classified under the Bantu peoples at 67%, the Nilotic peoples at around 30%, and the remainder is made up of other groups, mostly Cushitic, Arabs, Indians, and Europeans. Of the Bantu peoples, however, the largest tribes would be the Kikuyu, the Luya, and the Kamba, whereas the largest Nilotic group would be the Kalajin and the Luol. The country also uses the Kenyan shilling as their currency. They use the Type G British style plug outlet and they drive on the left side of the road. Basically, there is no single Kenyan culture, but rather a plethora of vibrant tribes, each with their own unique traits, trades, and traditions. For example, some of the overarching summaries I've gotten from you guys, the Kenyan geography peeps, include descriptions like the Kikuyu are often known for being good businessmen. The Luya are good at rugby. They're very good at rugby. They're very seriously, like and they're very proud that Obama's dad was from their tribe. Hmm. The Kisi yeah. are the tough tea farmers. Farmers. The college in are the runners, as 75% of all Olympic hmm. gold medal athletes have come from them, mostly in running sports. The Kamba yeah. are great pottery and carving artists. The Turkana have those really long beaded necklaces yeah. that stretch their necks. The Meru yeah. moved from Tanzania and might be a lost tribe of Israel. The Rendile are desert huh. nomads. The Idako have a cool dance and are known for bullfighting. The Mijikenda live in a sacred forest where they bury these secret talisman things that I didn't have time to research. Hey, Ken! No, uh, not doing it this time. No, I'm not, I'm not making a pun. I'm, I literally just want to ask you something. Oh. Okay. Can you uh, research the Mijikenda tribe for me? Laugh or you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> but the most famous and well-documented tribe Masai? would probably be the yeah. Maasai. Semi-nomadic sure. herders found in both Tanzania and Kenya, mm -hmm. largely in touch with their ancient traditions, known for their svelte tall bodies, unique customs, high jumping dances, wearing this thing known mm -hmm. as a shuka cloth, which mm -hmm. comes in various patterns, usually with red or blue on it. I bought this when I was in Tanzania. I never actually thought I would use it for anything, but <laughs> <laughs> 10 years later. Although Ten dozens of later. languages exist in Kenya, there are two official languages, English and Kiswahili. Kiswahili is estimated to be spoken by about 100 million people all across East Africa, and it is the only African language in the African Union. Many words are actually influenced from Arabic as Arabic merchants and slave traders came in at the turn of the first millennium. In fact, the word Swahili comes from the Arabic word Swahil, which means coasts. Kenyan key Swahili yeah. is known for being quite brash and blunt, whereas the Tanzanians are polite and proper. For example, a Tanzanian might say, Tafadali, naomba uni uzie maziwa, whereas a Kenyan might say, nataka maziwa. Fun side note, the words Hakuna Matata are actually Swahili. Yeah. However, the Opening lyrics of the Lion King Circle of Life song are actually Zulu from South Africa. Yeah, you know what I'm talking mm. about. Yeah. yeah, that's all Zulu. Now, history <laughs> will take way too long to explain, but in the quickest way I can put it, early fossils of Neolithic hunter-gatherers, probably mm -hmm. Khoisan people, Bushidic and Nilotic pastoralists probably move in from South Sudan and the Horn of Africa. Bantus come in and start farming and introduce iron. City-states pop up along the coast like Mombasa. Arabs and Persians come in and start trading for goods and slaves.
slaves, Kilwa Sultanate, the Portuguese guy comes in and observes things. Omani Arabs come in, the slave trade is in full force. The Portuguese come in in the 17th century, start trading with Omanis. This Chinese guy stops in and observes things. Kiswahili <laughs> becomes the lingua franca. Vasco da Gama takes a peek. Short-lived Wanga Kingdom. The Germans make a short-lived protectorate until the British finally come in and colonize. Tea starts growing, railroads get built. Tons of Indians come flocking as indentured servants. World War One, the Brits and Germans agree to avoid conflict in colonies. This guy doesn't listen, attacks. The Brits mm. get mad and attack from behind in Zambia because clearly he forgot that it was also colonized by the Brits. Princess Elizabeth is in a hotel in a national park when she gets a call saying that her father died and now she is Queen mm. Elizabeth. Mau Mau Uprising, Independence in 1963. Jomo Kenyatta is a hero. More years, loaded with controversy. 2002, he's not allowed to run again for president. A few massacres and a drought and eventually they get back up and move on. And that's where we are today. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. one of the biggest issues Kenya is faced with today would have to be tribalism. Today's mm. scuffles and arguments still do occasionally occur between certain groups. However, it's not so bad, but let's be honest, it's still kind of noticeable. Most of the drama is underground, and they still work heavily off of a bribe culture. The average Kenyan pays about 16 bribes per month just to get by in small situations in daily mm. life. They even have a word for it, kitu kidogo, which means kitu small kidogo. thing. Nonetheless, if there was a phrase that kind of summarized Kenya, it would probably be tibin, which translates to something like one last blow for triumph. And clearly it's been kind of a thing for Kenya as they become like a poster child for East Africa. Some famous people of Kenyan descent or from Kenya might include Field Marshal Dadan Kimati, and Mekatili Wamenza, Mother of the Resistance, Uhuru Kenyatta, Charity Nilu, John Kiriamiti, Ezekiel Kemboy, Kipchoge Keino, Lupita Nyongo, Paul yeah, Tayat, Dennis Oliek, Victor Wanyama, David Matenge, aka Nameless, Stella Mwangi, Fadili William, Obama's dad, Wangari Matai, Eric Wainaina, and probably the most famous one, Jomo Kenyatta, the father of Kenya. All right, that was a lot of info. Now let's finish <laughs> off this with some tibim and get to the last final segment, the... Kenya is kind of like the big shot of East and to some extent Central Africa. Let's put it this way. People in Africa moved to Kenya in hopes of getting a better life. First of all, Kenya was kind of like the shining jewel of the British East African colonies. They knew something was special about Kenya, so they introduced tea, they deliberately connected Mombasa with the West via railroad, and even after independence they remained part of the Commonwealth, and Brits make up the largest group of visitors and national citizens amongst the white mm. Kenyan population. India has a lot of ties to Kenya as immigrants were brought in by the British in the 19th century to build the Mombasa Railway. Some racial tensions exist however after both countries gained independence they started to cooperate much better. Prime Minister Nehru gave support to Jomo Kenyatta, they have a technical and economic cooperation program, they offer over 100 scholars, India makes up the sixth largest trading partner. Their no. best friends however would probably be Ethiopia, Tanzania and Uganda. For Ethiopia the Kenyan Mau Mau rebel group operated in Ethiopia during the uprising years, they have a mutual defense agreement especially against the greater Somalia ideologists living in South Ethiopia and Kenyans trust them like a wise uncle. Tanzania and Uganda have healthy rivalries with Kenya Kenya, but ultimately the three are like the Great Lake Kings that dominate Lake Victoria. All three speak Kiswahili, they understand and piggyback off of each other's cultures, they marry each other's citizens frequently, they love each other. In conclusion, <laughs> even though they, they may not be the other. most populous or largest in area, East Africa kind of revolves around Kenya. Economic and political controversies aside, they just have that certain drive that makes them stick out. When it comes to pulling through, they sure can. Yeah, do it. Stay tuned, uh -huh. Kidderbus is coming up next. Hey, I know, um... I guess Starbucks get a lot of the beans. Yeah, well, that's what it said. I don't know. I'd have to look I it up. It I don't know if they get that much from there or what. Yeah. But maybe they just get, maybe there's like a, like a line of coffee they get from there. Yeah. Because there's yeah. different flavors and stuff. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it, man. Um, I definitely like to visit Kings mm -hmm. today. I think oh, yeah. Kenya's fine. on my list. Been there for a while. Yeah. So I like to try to visit a lot of the African countries. You know, it would definitely be dope. If you want to support our channel, um, and give us a special video request, which we will have up between three or four days. Click the link to our stream lab. It's going to be in our pinned comment and our description. Don't forget to subscribe. And thumbs it up. Turn on the notification. It should be more of B. And Nicole. We're going to catch you on the next day. Awesome. Peace and love, baby.